Brockman, and it was U.S. Navy, Petty Officer Third Class, to meet the ship that I was going to be on. I knew I was going to be on it, and um, uh, I did not have sea experience. I wasn't a fellow that had, you know, been around the sea that much. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of fun to see that thing the first time, and uh, it was not the prettiest ship. Uh, you know, the destroyers and cruisers and battleships, they're, they're really kind of graceful and flowing. And as I say, this was, uh, if you've seen an LSD, it, it's a real workhorse of a ship. Um, but to me, it looked pretty good. Yeah. Of course, when I saw what I was going to sleep on, uh, <laughs> some of that excitement went away. <laughs> well, starting from the, the stern, it would be a hollowed out uh, length. Um, gee, I, I would say probably 120 feet long, maybe 50 feet wide, and that's where the vehicles and things would be. And then forward of that was uh, several decks, and the decks were made of steel. Uh, they used to say, I don't know how true it is, because I never really did it, but they used to say you could clean the decks with um, uh, Pepsi-Cola, because the chemical in Pepsi-Cola would remove rust and things like that. So there was the main deck, uh, then there was a, a conning deck which was raised, you'd go up a stairway, and it was raised, and that would be where the captain and the, um, the steerage was. Uh, then underneath that main deck would be the boiler room and the, uh, the, where the, really the mechanics of the ship went, went on. Um, I'm trying to think now, I can't really remember where the I think the dining room was on the main deck, and I think uh, the sleeping quarters, as I remember, was on the main deck. I don't think we had to go down. So that's kind of a picture of it, as I remember, but as I say, that's over 60 years ago. The flat bottom of the ship out in the North Atlantic, we encountered really, really heavy uh, storms, very heavy storms, where you would see, if you were looking out a porthole, all you would see would be the, you would see water. <laughs> we were kind of broken into the different uh, roles that we served. In other words, the quartermaster's guys, they would be in one section. The gunnery guys would be in another section. We did have guns. We had 50 caliber guns. Uh, but so you tended to hang out with the groups that you hung out with all day, really, at work. Uh, it crossed. I mean, it wasn't like it was exclusive or anything. But the sleeping arrangements were close. There were, I believe there were three three of these levels of the pipes that I mentioned with the canvas on them. So you'd have a guy near the floor, maybe a foot off the floor, you'd have a guy in the second bunk, and then you'd have a guy in the top bunk. Next to the bunks would be uh, really kind of small lockers, but they would, they would correspond with the level of, of the sleeping arrangements. Um, I can't remember much about the food. I, I'm sure we ate all in one group, really. It wasn't exclusive uh, that way. But the sleeping arrangements were really kind of by your work, by your, you know, the guys you hung out with at work. The only things that were different were the officers. The officers had their own dining room. They had, uh, uh, you know, linen tablecloths. They had the stewards that I spoke of earlier to serve them. 
and the enlisted men had the same kind of thing as you might have in your high school or junior high school, just tables that you would sit at and then you would go up and get your food and you would take care of throwing whatever the remnants were and stuff like that. So all of the enlisted men had the same kind of setup. The only separation were the officers. As I mentioned, I was in the captain's office. So it was a regular office procedure. It wasn't anything, I mean, I would do filing, I would do typing, I would do, uh, I never took shorthand or anything like that, but it would be just office work, really. Why I got onto it, I don't know. The, the services somehow have your record and your test scores and things like that. And evidently, it, one of the courses in high school that I took was typing. And so they matched me up, I think, by typing. If I had taken uh, some other course, maybe they would have put me in a different field. But it was, it was office work is really, that's all I can say. General Quarters was, um, <clears throat> everybody was assigned a place to be if there had been alarm. Uh, or a signal for general quarters. And mine was by the uh, 50 millimeter uh, gun turret. <clears throat> and um, so we would, we would be trained in how to, how to shoot, how to feed, you know, the uh, bullets and stuff into the, uh, the gun. So, and everybody had, had a general quarters. The, some guys would, would work the, the fire equipment so that if there had been a fire, they would be the guys that immediately handled the fire. Some guys would be stationed by the, by the uh, uh, life boats. We did have those. My name is Brockman, and the captain of the ship was Brock. So that was kind of a, it wasn't <laughs> no relation, but that was kind of fun for me. Um, and he would kind of kid once in a while. Uh, the, one of the officers who was a, a Greek fellow, culturally, he was one of the guys who said to me, um, Frank, you ought to, th well, he didn't say Frank, he said, Brockman, you ought to think about going to college when you get out you may have something to offer, and it may have something to offer you. So I developed a little camaraderie with both the captain and this uh, Vassilatus was the fellow's name. Uh, and then among the, the crew itself, the enlisted men, I mean, there was just, I don't know how else to relate to it. It was almost like you were on the same football team or the same baseball team. There was a, a real gung-ho, there was a real uh, age-wise, you were very close in age. Although there was one guy that I have to tell you about because the Second World War, as you know, was 41 to 45. And this fellow, and he was not unique, but uh, he worked in the same office with me. He had been in the Second World War the last year of the Second World War, had, when it was over, of course, he left and he went home, uh, got his job back, started back with his family, um, cut the grass, painted the house, did whatever you do when you're out as a civilian. And then one day, got a mail, got a thing in the mail that says you're recalled to the Navy. So he was on board with us. This was during the Korean War. So he was um, kind of embittered, as you might imagine. He had served in the Second World War, been a civilian, you know, enjoyed looking forward to raising his kids and all this stuff, and now was recalled for this, for the Korean War, I had no idea what was in store for him. Really, there were quite a few guys that uh, were recalled from the Second World War, and 
and came back for the Korean War. So it was, uh, I think that was a real hardship for many of them. They were, they were a little bit older, but you know, not much. He was probably, if I was 18 or 19, he was probably 25, 26, something like that.